to Good Monsters. My name is Cody Lawrence, your host, and we are going to be talking about the infection that is spreading in the seminaries. I have a clip here that has been going around that has been uh, shared on Facebook by a guy named Scott, the guy who posted it. Uh, he is a student and f- a former student, former employee, he uh, now a graduate of Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, and he has shared his um, his very shocking and sad experience of um, critical race theory, woke theology, uh, and things like that being taught and infecting the seminary, these anti-gospel teachings, and people in powerful positions who are defending them who are teaching them themselves who support them and uh, this is a serious problem the uh, this might not just be happening in southeastern baptist theological seminary in fact all of the presidents of the seminary and the president of the theological or the uh, southern baptist convention they all know each other they are not speaking out against critical race theory in any substantive way if you do not know what critical race theory is uh, you should do some research. Uh, Scott talks about it a little bit in his video. Basically, it is a very, very unchristian type of teaching. Uh, The Southern Baptist Convention recently tried to come out and say that it can be used as an analytical tool for interpreting scripture, which is the farthest thing from the truth. Uh, Critical race theory basically says that the world can be separated into uh, the powerful and the oppressed. And to fully understand scripture, we need to understand the Bible from the subjective perspective of the oppressed uh, instead of just powerful. So what that basically means is if you're white, then you can't understand the Bible fully. It also means if you're, let's just say you're a black person, but you're doing pretty well for yourself, you're not one of the oppressed, uh, so you can't understand the Bible fully until you understand somebody's, some oppressed person's, whatever that means, perspective on the Bible. Uh, it's totally unbiblical. It's outrageous. It's insane. And the seminaries, particularly Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, is supporting this. Many professors in the seminary teach it. And Scott, after he graduated, uh, felt that he should speak out against a lot of the things that have been happening in, at Southeastern. And I wanted to try to spread the word as well, because this is important. And it's not only infecting the seminaries, but this seminary teaches pastors. And our pastors are being taught these things to teach their congregations in the future. And so if this continues then we are going to have a weak, possibly false Christianity, uh, even more so than we already have in the country in the very near future. And uh, we, as, as a nation, are just going to continue getting farther and farther from God as we use these ungodly methods of trying to understand Scripture. So uh, here I'm going to play the clip from Scott. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I, whenever I first heard it, I didn't understand a lot of the the names or the things that he references, so I had to do a lot of research myself to kind of wrap my head around it. Um, so you can feel free to do that if you want to, but I edited this clip for brevity, and you should watch his um, his full clip on Facebook that I'll link in the show notes. So here it is. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Scott, and I just want to talk about my experience at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, which I am an alumni now. I graduated this past December. Just want to talk about my experience there. And then at the end of the video, to show some evidences that CRT is being taught there, whether directly or indirectly, but it is being taught there. And it really is concerning and it needs to be dealt with either by Danny Aiken or by the SBC directly. Stuff didn't really start clicking until 2019. Uh, I didn't I didn't speak up until that summer for the SBC convention when I called out 
Al Mohler to do something to rescind this resolution. I got met with pushback from administration. It was amazing to see from just the student body, you know, that the pushback that Tom Askell and Tom Buck was getting for just speaking up on uh, the issue and saying how godless this ideology is, which if we look at it, it's a pagan ideology and does not need to be anywhere associated with the body of Christ. And I wholeheartedly agree with Tom Buck and Tom Askell on this. You can't convince me otherwise. Where does scripture say we need analytical tools to help with the gospel? It doesn't. It's not there. That's why when you press people on this, it their arguments fall apart because they can't back it up with scripture. I just think some people at Southeastern, namely Walter Strickland and a few students are being held captive by false ideology as Colossians 2.8 talks about. I still was like, how can this be useful as an analytical tool for the gospel when it's a pagan ideology? That's like using Gnosticism as an analytical tool, which we would never use. November was when Push came to shove because I, I remember that was when they hired Karen Pryor, 2000, you know, 2019 in November. They said she'll be on faculty teaching English. And I remember reposting Founders article about it where they had some concerns. And I reposted it. It had the Sebbets tag in it. Well, I remember because it, it was Thanksgiving break. So I was heading home to Tennessee from where I'm from. And um, also I got an email from uh, Ron Hutchinson saying, you can't post that. I was like, okay, I'll delete it. But I was like, can I come talk to you about it? Cause what they're saying has some merit. So when I got back from Thanksgiving break, uh, that Monday we talked about it and I was just like, they have merit on this. And it was like, uh, Hutchinson was like, do you really think they would hire somebody that's unorthodox? And I was just like, well, from this article, yeah. So we had that talk. And then with respect, uh, left the meeting discouraged that December, I found out that they really wanted me fired talking with two people that I worked with, um, that told me, and that was very discouraging is, is very, I was very upset that you can't even criticize anything. I understand I work for the school and, I there's an ethic there, but shouldn't the gospel come first? no matter whether it's the school or not. Like, it seems like you're sort of keeping matters in the house and not letting anything be criticized. So that December, Askell had a follow-up article, which I reposted because it didn't have the Sebbets tag on it. And she never made a renouncement of revoice. And everything I said in the meeting about, well, she didn't say this, uh, was true. I talked with someone that was in the hiring process on for her, and they've said they vetted her on it. Well, I, I told him, I was like, well, she needs to make a statement on it. They basically said, oh, she doesn't need to make a public statement when she's told us. And I was just like, well, you wonder why the public perception about Southeastern is the way it is. Maybe it's because of that. We need to take a look at it. We need to reevaluate some things. And like you've seen, I mean, the one video out there where they show the clips like how do you how can you say they're taking out of con context when he posts the link to each of the videos or when the founders doc came out and they show what's going on how can you refute that when there is video evidence of what you said so as 2020 uh continued. Uh, I remember going to, um, I was taking theology too at the time and uh, Dr. Keith Lee, who's over the Bush Center, had Neil Shinby come for the CRT uh, discussion. And I made my thoughts known. He asked for questions. I asked him, well, what's your thought on the Dallas statement that John MacArthur, James White, Michael O'Fallon and all them. And he said uh, he disagreed with it. And I was like, why? And he sort of stumbled around. Uh, he sort of stumbled around the answer, and I was like, "Is that not a biblical statement?" And he said it was. And I was like, "What's the problem?" And he wouldn't give me. Uh, he danced around the answer. But I asked, he said, "Why couldn't you just get James Watt or 
Virgil or one of them come up here and those like, well, they, you know, they basically said uh, they'd want to debate. And I was just like, what's wrong with that? And it's just like, they don't want, they don't want to debate it. And I just don't get it. When does the scripture call, call us to come reason together? Uh, I mean, I know I disagree with a lot of people at Southeastern, some students, you know, but we still talk about it and see each other's side. And I thought we could do that with this, but uh, apparently not. Um, it was brought to my attention recently through DMs that they have. And I was just like, really? Because I've talked with them and they say the opposite. They say uh, they haven't, which is it? I just wish that they could see that CRT is being taught there and it needs to be found out and removed. And if someone's teaching it, they need to be removed. I just want to say one more thing before I let the clip show. I go, I went to Imago Day. I remember one instance during 2020 where one elder in particular, Zach Leons, confronted me about you shouldn't call out Strickland like that. And he went from the standpoint of epistemology approach. You have to learn from people's experience. I'm not saying everybody in Imago Day is teaching this. Tony's not because I would have said something, obviously. For them to call me out for Strickland when the teaching videos are out there in the public sphere, very uncalled for. And again, no ill will towards them. I love them. I love my time there. But they do have an elder there that does standpoint epistemology and he goes to Southeastern and it doesn't take, you know, a rocket scientist to figure out that it's being taught at Southeastern and you can go look at the clips. Others have pointed it out. So it needs to be called out. Uh, hopefully whoever the SBC president is uh, going into convention will, you know, look at this and just get it called out and removed from the seminaries. It is antithetical to the gospel. It's a other religion and it needs to be stopped. Uh, thank you for watching and grace and peace to you. Mm -hmm.